trailer wet working. Okay, welcome everybody. Tackle Shop Live today. Hank Cherry wins the classic. Starting up in just a minute. Sunny day, a right there you took my breath away. A young and pretty, was it just a dream? The next day you called me up, you told me I'm your little buttercup. You came over and you fell into my arms. Well, I know what I feel. Please tell me your love is real. You make me smile yeah, yeah, yeah. Another tackle shop live. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. I'm Mike Acord, as most of you know. If not, welcome. Bro man over here, George Acord, in the house. Ready to go. No Corbin today. He's off. But we have on our camera, Nicholas Wink is here. How you doing, Nick? Doing good. All right. So, James Hawk, how you doing? Mark, how? what's up, Mark? Ed Edward, what's up, Ed? Uh, John Cop, how you, John? How you doing, Kevin Carpenter? What's up, brother? Paul, good to see you. Uh, who else we got here, George? Philip, Philip Goods in the house. Yeah, yeah. Michelle Ray, Renee, how you doing? McKelly, McKelly, Michelle, Michelle, McKelly, Michelle, 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 Michelle Renee. Yeah. I don't think that's it. I'm going to put a dollar on it. Dale Fogel. James, Jamie Johnson. How are you? Anyway, thanks so much for stopping in for another edition here. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Uh, for another edition of Tackle Shop Live. Um, and it's just me and George today, so we're going to come at you with all, some kind of cool stuff. But one of the th things we, um, we want to talk about is uh, Hank Cherry. Congratulations to him. Winning the Bassmaster Classic two times, back to back, unbelievable. Yeah, uh, just a great, great deal uh, for him. And uh, you know, it was it was a great event. It was. It was a, it was a great event. It was exciting. Uh, I think. Um, I think the way he was just whacking him, man. He was just hammering him. Yeah, and when you consider, I mean, what caught my eye was the lake flooded. Yeah. You know, right before the classic, um, and you know, anytime you get like a, a a big change on your on your lake or your body of water, yeah, you know that's not always a good thing. You know, after they after the fish adjust to it, then it's a great thing. Oh yeah, but you know this this water came up, and then on top of that, it got Texas hot, and then add to that couple hundred of your best friends driving their trolling motors and pinging their graphs all around <laughs> you while you're trying to catch a fish in two foot of water. Yeah. And, uh, it's yep. amazing that they catch anything. They do. They, they, it's unbelievable, but, and, uh, you know, they all, they all shout out, uh, you know, to the fans on the water, you know, how they, how they love having them there and, and, uh, the seasoned classic I, guys, you know, they're directing traffic. Yeah. You know, can you, I'm going to, thanks a lot. I'm coming up through. Can you kind of stay back? And yeah, but, you know, when you get the final day and you're in contention to win, it's a little know, nerve wracking. You might have fifty to a hundred boats on you, and they get close. Well, they get a little too close, I think. You know, well, that would, usually, dri that would drive me friggin' bananas. What a lot of the guys have adapted to, a lot of the veterans have adapted to, is they'll get they'll get somebody to run with them, yeah, and be the buffer, and yeah. kind of like dog people out and keep them out. And then, yeah. and if, you know, you'll see, like I saw Brandon Polinick a couple times. Hey guys, I'm, I'm going to work this whole bridge, you know, Hey, thanks a lot. Can you, can you stay back? Because you know, that's, that's, that's pressure, man. And, 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 oh, yeah. and, 
you know, these fish were already really tough. If you noticed on uh, day three, man, those guys struggled. Yeah. You know, and then you add in all those extra influences. So outstanding job. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the anglers in the classic. Yeah. Um, and, and they're adapting to the. Yeah, we'll get into some of the patterns that they did yeah. uh, here in a few minutes. Yeah, we got some uh, great information on that. Joseph Cascarino, Dale Fogel, how you doing? Randy Lippard, he has the greatest. He's watching Tackle Shop live from the greatest vantage point. He's watching it from Muddy Run Lake fishing. Yeah. Way to go, bro. Way That's to go, Randy. Gary Kalick, hey, man, what's happening, buddy? How you doing, Gary? Um uh, Cuba's in the house. How you doing, Cuba? David Schottemeyer, Stoudemire, and uh, Richie, how you doing? So uh, uh, good to see everybody. Um, so, George, where do you want to go with this? You want to you want to talk about you want to talk about some of the winning ways of the yeah. Master classic yeah i want to talk about the classic some of the stuff that they were using i want to talk about the classic and and we, we got a big show we got we got tournament talk we want to talk about which jumps us into patterns yeah which jumps us into lures which jumps us into some of the new product that we that we received in the shop today we got a couple things we want to kind of highlight today so um yeah let's go there george let's let's go right to uh um the tournament talk and jump right into the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah. So the Bassmaster Classic is here, and they fished all kinds of stuff, man. Flipping, pitching, course jerk baiting. Yeah. Um, who would have thought a jerk bait would have played in Texas in in that heat? But Hank Cherry, you know, he'll make jerk bait work anywhere. Yep. And uh, that's what he did. Did he catch all of his fish on that? No, he only caught a few key ones on there. I got a hatch coming off here. I got him, though. Is it a midge 22? Yeah, it was at least a 22. <laughs> um, the last thing that went through his mind. Listen, Hank Cherry did what most people did. They, they, they were pitching and flipping. And, you know, that's what we need to learn. You know, when our, when our bodies of water flood, you know, that's that's it. At first, that can be a tough bite, and you need to go shallow. But what was interesting was most of these guys were fishing the normal bank. Oh. not They weren't going back as far as they could go in the flooded. Some some guys went inside. Did they catch them in? Did they catch them? Some of them caught them in there. but Yeah, some of the fish were caught inside. Hank Cherry even pointed out, he said, uh, the one bank he was fishing got received some pressure, so he went inside and caught a couple fish. You know, obviously, some of the fish are going to move up with the water, and that's generally what they do. How do they say? How do they think the weights were? Were they were they good weights or were they down a little bit compared to? Well, that lake that lake's known for giant fish. Yeah, that's Ray Roberts. Um, it's not known for a lot of fish, but it's known for like an abundance of eight, nine, and ten pound fish. And we saw some of those, Frank. Frank the Tank Tally caught that big eight, oh, yeah. eight something on day yeah. one. I like the first cast of uh, of uh, uh, Zaldane throwing in that big gigantic spoon, pitched it in like a jig. It's falling, it's falling. He picks up on it. And it's a six, six something, seven. I thought it was seven. It was six, like six and a, six and three quarters. Or something I like the it. fact that he boat flipped it. Yeah, he boat flips it on his very first cast of the Bassmaster Classic. Well, it wasn't his first cast of the Classic. It was his first class when he relocated. Oh, but. So, yeah, you know, a lot of these guys keyed on the original, and they had some killer drone shots showing that original that original bank. And, of course, Hank was doing what most of them are doing. He was pitching a, a, a jig um, mm -hmm. with, a, with a, you know, a cross-style trailer. He was also uh, pitching a Max Scent um, creature. A lot of the Berkeley pros, their trailers and their creature baits were the – uh, yet to be released, Max sent Chigger Crawl. So they took the Chigger Crawl Max and sense. they made it out of Max Scent. Now, you know, 
Why would they do they that? They can't really deliver anything. They can't, even they send can't deliver Max anything, set. let alone Max set. So we'll, we'll have that for you in the in uh, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, eventually they're going to get it right. Um, but the Max set Chigger Cross coming. Um, we ordered like 400,000 packs. So, you know, we'll have some for you. Uh, and he also caught a bunch of fish, which on something that I liked, he went down and fished the dam breast. And in the summertime, the dam breast is a great place to fish. Um, when lakes flood and, and, and you tide water guys, when, when you get a flood tide on a tidal water body of water, go to some high bank that contains the water and prevents it from leaching out you know ray roberts is a flat lake you put four foot of water in ray roberts and four it's foot way of water, back in there four foot of water can put you you know off yeah. the grid well you know remember that time back in the early days when i fished that tournament on the mississippi river and it was 17 feet over flood stage yeah up uh, up uh, we were running our boats over miles and miles of what would normally be dry ground. Yeah. Just like through the woods, just on plane, just driving around trees for yeah. miles. Yeah. Trying to find where the water ended. Um, yeah. And that's, that's kind of what you have to do when that, when that water's up for a while. So go into a dam breast or go into a high bank, something that contains the water. At least, you know, those fish are going to be there. Oh yeah, and of course he dialed in that uh, panoptic unit, that live scope. Yeah, and he was throwing his new Berkeley Stunner jerkbait. Man, yeah, what a compliment to, uh, I think a compliment to the Mega Bass Company. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, every everybody who has and that's what I'm saying. You know, uh, you know. Every time a new jerkbait comes out on the market, I think the very first one was that one from Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. You know, it's a copy of the very famous uh, Vision 110. That one was a bold yeah, copy. That was a real bold copy. And then there's been, you know, a lot of baits that are very, very similar to it. Trying to copy, but not totally copy the Vision One Ten. But what a weight transfer system! What a now he has his weighted to slowly sink. He said the key to the bait was he would he would he would let it slowly sink a little bit. So, yeah, I can dig that. Yeah, that's kind of what I can uh, dig that. that's kind of what Rapala did when they came out with that shadow wrap. Yeah, there's a time and a place and for the that. shadow wrap yeah, shad. Exactly, they made those baits slowly slow sink yeah the shadow wrap shad slowly sinks the shadow wrap slowly yeah. rises um but overall course, i mean overall the the you know the if i was mega bass and i all these people are copying me i'd be like yeah that's right you're copying the best you know you're copying yeah. you're copying the, the deal well you know uh what do they say uh highest form of flattery is imitation or yeah. something like that yeah but the other interesting thing he said about that bait you know, they have their own hook company, Fusion Hooks. Yeah. And he said, I take this bait out of the box and I start fishing with it. I don't change hooks. I don't do anything. I tie it on. So you fished uh, the Fusion Hooks off, off the crankbaits that, that are out there now, right? Yeah, I fish the, uh, I'm a, I yeah. love that uh, Fritz side. Fritz side, yeah. I mean, I, I love the Fritz side. That hook is sharp. It's, it's sharp. And, and it's a good hook. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, all, all the fishing that we've done, it. we got Corbin's a big fusion kind of fisherman. Uh, he talks about it all the time. He catches a lot of fish. On yeah. So, I yeah, think when you buy, it's I a mean, good, it's a good hook. There was a time when you had to change hooks out on baits. You remember the old Bill Lewis rattle trap? Well, we talk about that all the time, man. It was like a pain in the neck because you had to buy your, buy your rattle traps, instantly take the hooks off. Well, it would have been nice if they sold them without hooks. It would have been. But they didn't. Yeah. So we, we got good at switching. You know what Bill off. Lewis is doing now with their rattle traps? They're they're not messing around. They're putting Mustad KVD triple grips on them. Yeah, right out of the box. So get go. Great play by Bill Lewis. You buy a Bill Lewis rattle trap, you tie it on. Just start fishing. You buy a Bill Lewis crankbait, you tie it on. You buy a Berkeley crankbait, you tie it on. You buy a Spro. 
Yeah. Spro and Gamagatsu, Gamagatsu are the same company. You buy a Spro, it's got Gamagatsu's on it. It's got all Gamagatsu's on it. You know, Mega Bass has outstanding hooks. Lucky Craft, yeah. uh, Lucky Craft uses a chemically sharpened VMC hook. You buy I a, mean, there's a bunch of baits, Mike, yeah. that, that you buy now. But watch that, out. You get into that Pradco brand. Yeah. Watch out. Watch yeah, out. I mean, Pradco. They used so, to do cool stuff. They used to use a triple grip. On, no, they uh, used a rotating hook. Oh yeah, rotating hook. Yeah, a rotating yeah. treble, the TX three. Yeah, TX three, and, um, and and they and they still have a f uh, on some of their baits, but some of their hooks you need yeah. to you need to sharpen and or change out. Bandit used to use uh, BMC wide gaps. They used they used uh, wide uh, gaps. Yeah. yeah, and then they, you know, then they were bought out. So you got to watch the Pradco stuff. Yeah, but great. Uh, Keep an eye on it. Great deal on Hank Cherry, um, and that Stunna jerk bait. Yeah. When's that uh, gonna be available? Well, it's a pretty cool story on that. Our rep team and our good friends at uh, Pure Fishing, some of the some of the the manager guys who we know really well, they were they were able to get us the sort of the sort of the information to order them. Yeah. They took a picture off there. Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about it. Yeah. But anyways, we <laughs> we got a bunch of them coming, man. I'm talking like. They yeah. said we're in the first 10 dealers that got orders in. So we yeah. got a bunch of stunners coming in. Of course, we'll make a big deal out of that. And that, yeah. uh, so, hey, congratulations to Hank Cherry. Yep. Uh, and we will, you know, at some point here on Tackle Shop Live, we will have Hank back on. He is on, he is uh, on call for us. He said he will do our show. And things yeah. have just been so crazy. We just haven't been reaching out to these guys. You know, we got, you know, we got Denny Brower on deck. We got Hank on deck. We got a few other pros on deck and everybody's world has just been so crazy and yeah. so nuts that, you know, we just been kind of laying back a little bit and let the season wind down. And then we're going to bring some of these guys on and have some really exciting yeah. uh, shows. Now, second place, Mike, I don't know if you caught up on this, but second place has a very interesting story behind it. Matt Airy. Yeah. Who, you know, is uh, yeah. good friends of Hank Cherry. They they they're from the same area of North Carolina. You know, he lost a four pound class fish on the on the championship day. He weighed a big bag in the last day, though. He did. Yeah. He did, but he lost a four pound caliber fish that very possibly could have called him up. He lost he finished second by 115, and it very possibly ah. could have called. Now, here's how he lost it. His cardinal rule. Now, he was one of the anglers who was making a frog work. Wow. And on the last day, he Frogs, had, everything. Yeah, he had to switch up to a white frog because they were really keyed in on bait fish. Yeah. And he said, the thing when you're frog fishing, his number one rule on frog fishing is you have to keep that frog in your focus at all times. And it was 99 degrees, and these guys were sweating bullets. And he said the sweat was pouring into his eyes so bad that he took a second to clean the sweat out of his eyes. And he heard something, and when he looked up, his line was screaming towards his boat. And his frog was MIA. And he was reeling like a madman. And you know how that is. Yeah, and he thought he was caught up to him, but he wasn't sure. So he set the hook, and the fish jumped apparently on the other side of the boat, and was yeah. gone. And that that fish will haunt him like forever. You sure. know what I mean? Oh yeah, man. And there's a lot of really good stories in the classic. And you know who that happened to? A few years ago, Hank Cherry. Oh, and he said it was like demoralizing <laughs> that he he he, he was, was close, sick so close and he, he was lost that sick fish. over this fish he lost several years well, ago funny funny because i think in all the classic of, all of us turn yeah in the classic yeah i think uh, all of us tournament anglers you know who fish some big tournaments you know I mean, we don't fish the classic but we fish things that mean as much in some situations a divisional tournament uh you know, championship in your in your series that you work so hard with with all year long, and I you know, and every now and then, you know, you lose that fish, or you had that fish hook that, you know, maybe was the one that pushed you over the top, or was the one that pushed you over the top, and it's devastating. Yeah. It's absolutely devastating, it, it even at our level. But can you imagine it at the classic? 
you know, classic right there in your hands and it's gone. It is, you know, and unbelievable. You know, it's like any it's like any sport you get into, you know, you you, you aspire to do the best yeah. you can do when you get into it. I was talking with a angler in the shop here about two weeks ago and 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 uh he was telling me about a couple tournaments that he's been fishing and he's just been losing fish like crazy. And he's, he's like to the point where he's wants to change rods, you know, tackle everything. And, and we talked about a couple little key things and turns out yeah, he was losing a ton of fish because he was fishing a medium powered rod yeah, and a super line hook. Sure. And you not, know, not getting the hook. He buried. wasn't fishing braid. Yeah. And he wasn't getting that, that good hook up. So we mm -hmm. talked it out and, and I said, wait a minute, I think you should go to a lighter wire hook. And I showed him the difference in hook wires and I have yet to talk to him since then, but yeah, you know, sometimes you have to change things. You know, I remember years ago when I was really going after the, the, the tournament scene, I had a really bad run like that. And I totally reinvented my hook set. I mean, it was really, it was a problem. So yeah. You know, that fish is going to haunt Matt Airy and he doesn't have to reinvent his hook set and he knows how to frog fish as good as anybody on earth. But 99, 99 degree Texas heat was burning his eyeballs out. Yeah. And he, he momentarily lapsed. It happens. Yeah. It happens to the best of them. So you can I, see right there. You know? I don't know. Did you watch much of that live Nick on the classic? Uh, yes, I did. And. You were talking about the heat and Hank Cherry said when he won that during the day he wanted, he was slowing down and some of the crowd was telling him, don't slow down. Now you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing. And it motivated him to just keep grinding. Keep grinding. It's a, it's a tough day out there. You know, I'd like and to interview speaking of the heat, Nick, I'd like to interview Hank Cherry and Scott Canterbury. And I'd like to know why when they're forecasting 99 degree heat, Scott Canterbury, you wear black long pants and a black jersey with long sleeves. He, I, pro I, he probably didn't think it was that cold. I want to I want to know that. And then Hank Cherry, I want to know why you wear a mostly black jersey and then you put a black hood on your head with black shorts. Now, maybe it's just like it makes you like tougher. Or maybe it makes you focus, but man, get you a white jersey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> really? What's the what's matter with you? Scott thinking? Canterbury, man. Every time I see him and it's sweltering oh, hot, God. he's got long black pants on and a oh, long sleeve black jersey. I'm telling you, he's like Johnny Cash out there. I don't know. A couple of years ago, we went down to Florida to the ICAST Cup and it was 100. What even 100? It was like going to be 100 that day. And we got on the water 530 in the morning and blast off, man. We go right to our spot. We're fishing. We're, we're like, yeah, this is awesome, man. I can't believe we only can, can't believe we have to come off at 10 o'clock. I mean, 1030. I, 1030 I, is the way. I, I would do this all. I mean, this would be, I wish we could fish a good solid eight hour tournament. I, I, this is no bull crap. At nine o'clock, I was pleading with my boater to take me back in. I was so hot. It's so miserable. It was horrible. We drank all of Keith Combs water by <laughs> like eight o'clock. We were like, thank God this tournament was over at 1030 because we were going to die. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had to do the weigh in, which took like two hours and it was one million degrees yeah, at Big Toho Marina. And you were looking for like a little piece of shade and you kind of get in this little piece of shade <laughs> and like sit there. I'm not kidding you, man. It was bad. It was friggin' hot. Yeah, it was an interesting deal. So I can really, uh, I was really relating to these guys in that heat. And every one of them talked about the heat. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so that's what I, that's what I noticed on first and second, Mike. And I noticed that trend of the flipping. Yeah. You know, I, I, all the ways down through the field, they were all flipping yeah. jigs and creature baits. Well, my boy was flipping you know? the, the, the Magnum, um, chick, uh, <laughs> Uh, ultra vibe speed crawl. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Ma the mag ultra vibe speed crawl was meant to be flipped and he was catching fish, but he just wasn't catching the right ones. When they, when, when, when they made that bait, they, they were, they were in their minds. They were on a big old flipping bite. Cause that thing's perfect for a so four -aught did, hook. Did you go over the, the standings to see who out of us did well? Uh, none of us did well, Mike. Yeah, but what did did you? Uh, who won out of us? 
I, there's got to always got to be a winner. There does always. I thought we were just going all. It was all in. You either win or you don't win. You got to have some kind of bragging rights. Well, I had Steve Kennedy. Yeah, where did he end up? Uh, he fished on Sunday. Oh, did he? Yeah, he, he fished. made the cut. Yeah, he ma he made the final cut on Sunday. And, and Corbin had uh, Corbin had John Cox. Oh, and John yeah, Cox did not. John, make the John final did cut. not do well. I don't think. Um, Who'd you have, Mike? I had uh, um, the kid. Like, I wrote it down because yeah, I don't. I don't. Got the I kid. don't trust you on on the matters of wagers. No, I had Matt Airy. Uh, Nick had Patrick Walters, who made the final day. I think he finished tenth. Oh. Um, I can't believe you didn't look that up and track all that. You had Brian New. Yeah, he didn't do well. So it's down to me and Nick. He didn't make the cut, I don't think. It's down to me and Nick. So we need to we need to effort Patrick Waters or Steve Kennedy. And you know what? We can we have a device here that yeah. will tell us all these wonderful things. And we'll look this up as we discuss. Well, I mean, we got guys out here that could probably do that. Andre, you could probably look that up for us. You're all over that kind of stuff. So uh, uh let me get back to my classic notes here. Matt Elliott, how you doing? Justin Bean, Logan Schellenberger's in the house. Yeah, Logan's in the house. What do you say, Logan? Um, Steve Kennedy finished higher. Ah, sorry, Nick. I believe that was five dollars. I think Andre needs to recheck that one. Oh, see, that's why you got to ah, go. You got to go right to the papers. Well, what, one thing that was really interesting, Steve Kennedy, who George had, and Patrick Walters, who I took, Yeah. what affected them the most was that storm that came in after the first day. Yeah, right. It screwed totally, them up. Right. They were first and second. Yeah. Killed their shad bite. Well, shad you know, spawn. You know, you always got to have a backup plan. Always got to have a backup plan. It killed the shad spawn. Yeah. And I... I, I, Steve Kennedy, I think, would have walked away with it if it if it if it would have stayed that way, the way he was catching them. I mean, he was killing them. Then they also had a, I think, a two hour delay. I think the second day. Yeah, so that, that really that really screwed them up. Screwed them up. Yeah, yeah. They had some kind of mega cell come through. Mark Snyder's here. How you doing, Mark? Jeff Riddle. He picked Cherry. Did you really, Jeff? I don't think so. Maybe you did. I think some people did pick Cherry. On, on our on our thing last week. I saw him scrolling up through there. Maybe it did. That would have been a good pick. Yeah. I got the I got the top twenty five here. Uh I got the top twenty five here. I'm scrolling down through here. So one of our guys said uh Hank Cherry had a foul hook fish. Does that keep? Well yeah it does it does keep rolling only because they weren't sight fishing. You know, there's the fish swipe at something. As long as you're not sight fishing that fish, then you can put that fish in the boat. Yeah, true. Yeah. They have to be hooked in the mouth if you're sight fishing. If you're sight fishing, they got to be hooked in the mouth. That's why you see during the spring events, they're always saying in the mouth, in the mouth. So yeah. Steve Kennedy did not fish on championship Sunday. Oh. He he finished in 13th place. Only the top 10 went out on the last day, right? Or was it 25? It, it was the top 25. Okay, so Steve Kennedy did fish the last day. He finished in 13th. And we got to find out where Patrick Waters fixed, fished. Here he is. Wait a minute. Breaking news. Breaking news. Tenth place. Ah. <laughs> Nick says, show me the money. Uh, Andre, I wouldn't show your face around here. Nick's going to take you down, man. He's going to wrestle you to the ground. Nice, was, on nice fourth, try, Andre. On the third day, uh, Kennedy... He lost some big fish again. Yeah. And I think he only weighed in two for like three pounds. He lost well, a my giant. My guy was handicapped. It doesn't really, you know. He lost a giant, Mike. My guy was handicapped, bro. Uh, Steve Kennedy lost an absolute Texas stud in a tree. Yeah. So, okay. Enough about that. How about uh, this little interesting deal here? Nick wins. That's enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hell of that. We don't talk about that no yeah, more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nick won. Nick won. We'll pay him. We'll pay him his money a couple years from now. <laughs> we got you covered, Nick. Uh, <laughs> we'll have a we'll have the official payout the next time Corbin's here because we're gonna get that money out of his wallet too. Oh yeah. So what do we got here? Flipping. Oh. Now this guy 
was exciting. Justin Kerr. Mm. Now, Justin Kerr is a West Coast legend. I mean, he tears it up. He came in through the Bass Federation. So we got a Federation Nation guy who made it to the Classic and finished like, I don't know, in the top 10. Uh, he was throwing. He made power fishing work. You know, most guys weren't power fishing. Power fishing wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. But he made power fishing work. He caught his fish on a jackhammer and a big wooden rat. I saw that. Now, if you've ever seen that was this, awesome. If you've ever seen the Spro fifty size rat, yeah, which we have here, yeah, that's the size rat he was throwing. Yeah, the big boy, the big hammer. Whose rat was that? Luke? It was a handmade wooden rat. Really? Yep. Hand carved, wake, probably wake bait. Probably now, probably on that thing for all week. He, he might have caught thing. he might have caught a fish or two on it, but probably it showed him a lot of fish. Those wake baits will tend to show you some fish. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. And he is a West Coast stud, Justin Curry. I don't know what it is about that rat. You know, we have guys on the Susquehanna River throwing a, a rat. They walk it like a dog. And not just a small one, but the next one up, the uh the 30. The 30. Uh they walk that like a dog, you know. Well, and, it's a big wake bait. And it's, you know, it they catch fish on it. And, and I think George is right. I think it draws fish in and shows you where they're at. The thing I've learned about wake baits from, from the pros is they really like a wake bait from the time the fish move up to spawn until the beginning of the post spawn period. And they, you know, if you if you if you if you ever noticed, um if you ever noticed with wake baits, you know, like uh Spro has what they call the zero minnow. Which is like an like a minnow style bait that is a wake bait, kind of like the old uh, cotton cordell minnow bait that and the old bomber minnow bait that the guys would modify by bending the lips down for that wake. Yeah. And now you know, wake baits have really become a big thing. The I'm a Ramba, uh, you know, baby one minus. Um, oh yeah. You know, uh, those kind of baits. There's the, a bunch the of KVD 2.5 waker. Yeah. So wake baits, I found wake baits to be really, really effective all, all phases of the spawn, particularly in the post spawn. And that's what this guy was doing. Yeah. Because like these fish just fin a lot of these fish on Ray Roberts just finished spawning. Really? Yeah. Freaking Ray Roberts was frozen this winter. Well, they yeah. Were ice fishing. Out yeah. There. Well, they hell yeah. Shanties and you know what happened in Texas this winter? Yeah, you, you heard about that. It got so cold. Uh, Ted Cruz had to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong, Ted Cruz. I apologize profusely. Uh, yeah, so that was interesting for me. And P Pipkins made the power play work. He fished a popper and a crankbait, so he was power power wagoning. I like a popper for uh, post spawn. Todd Auton. That's one of my favorite things to do. Threw a vixen. Now he yeah. also was flipping. Yeah. But he he made a vixen work. Yeah, I I mean, right now, man, on the river and, and on these lakes around here, you know, you can't go wrong with top water. I mean, it's really top water's awesome. And you can with a, like a splash it or a Rico, you can get that thing just walking. You don't want it just like get it's just that nice walk and man, they just plow that thing and you can Oh, well, we talked about that uh, yeah. uh, on on a topwater show. It's real. It time. is, yeah, and it's just you know that. But people, people, you know, we kind of forget about topwater yeah. fishing. You know, we just kind of think, well, we have to slow down because these fish are post spawn or they're suspended on a point or you got to crank bait them. You're hearing everybody crank baiting, and no, man, you can you throw you throw a walking bait now and you throw your topwaters now and you get that stuff going right away. You see these guys, you know, catching frogs and all that kind of stuff. Dale Fogel, uh, uh, just just uh. Posted up some info for us. Justin Kerr finished fourth. How about that? Yeah. Federation guy comes to the classic, kind of like, uh, you know, Cinderella story, Caddyshack, you know? Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Come from behind. Fantastic, man. Congratulations, Justin Kerr. It was really fun watching you. Um, you know, also, there was a couple guys fishing outside because they said that outside bite could have been deadly, but nobody could make it work. 
couple guys made it work a little bit. Uh, Palinick and Cody Bird made it work with crankbaits. Palinick, a DT, and Cody Bird, what else? 6XD. I mean, yeah. When do we not have a tournament that we talk about 6XDs? I mean, does that happen? Right on. Do you ever have a tournament when the 6XD isn't like? It's awesome. I mean, I like him weird baits that, you know, that guys catch him on, you know, that like, I, I, if that guy with that rat would have like came in second place, I'd have been cool as hell. Came in fourth. And that rat, well, he, it was huge. And he would Gigantic. flip it in there into this, you know, trees and it would just squirm along. It just was come right crazy out of there. looking. Nick, I'm going to yeah. show you how big that rat yeah. was. I mean, to me, that's just neat stuff. That's like that, that, that Waker BX Minnow from uh, Rapala. You know, for you guys who, um, you know, fish in Finger Lakes, post-spawn, spawn, post-spawn post right now in June, early July, throw that BX Wake and Minnow. That thing, just wake it along real slow. Just hold your rod high and just wake that sucker, man. They they smoke that thing. That's like a weird bait, you know? It's a wake jerk bait. It's like, it's like that long. Look at this thing. This is a BBZ rat. It's a gigantic. And Kerr's bait might even have been better. Gigantosaur. Got to hold it still so it focuses on it. Whoa. Well, anyway, you get the gist. You get the gist. And then there's waking minnows. Waking minnows. Yeah, there's those waking minnows. Look at the size of them things. Hold them up a little bit. Uh, Yeah, back a little bit. They're right there. Up a little bottom bit. Bottom one is that Spro Zero minnow. Yeah. We need to be throwing that right now. Yeah. Either. Yeah. There you go. Those are those are cool as hell to fish. That's fun. That's fun stuff. That's why I like. That's why I like about it. You know, people catching fish on fun stuff like that. Plus, we learn something. And you do learn something. It's time to wake them up. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our classic recap. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to add to that. Uh, that was exciting. But I got another tournament we can talk about yeah. also. That's 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 a little closer to home and pretty darn interesting in its own right. Well, uh, and there and there's one going on right now. It's something about what's Pro, the uh, F uh, the MLF Pro Circuit is day one today on the Potomac River. Yeah. And let me tell you who's leading this thing. With 17 pounds, which, by the way, 17 pounds is a very good weight for a uh, Potomac River yeah. bag. So, generally, if you Big look time. at summertime, you know, June, July, tour-level events on the Potomac for the last several years, 60 to 65 pounds wins them. Okay? Wow. That's 15 pounds a day. So... Wait, you hear this name? Lawson Hibden. Lawson Hibden. His dad is Dion Hibden. Oh, Dion. His grandfather is the one and only Guido Hibden. Yeah, Guido, yeah. So, I mean, this kid yeah. was probably flipping for large mouse while he was still wearing a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> probably. He probably and, was, man. And now he is on tour. Probably using the Guido bug. He's in first place. Anybody know about the Guido bug? On a Potomac River. Second place. <laughs> this is awesome, man. Zell Roland. Yeah. With 16 yeah. pounds, 15 ounces. That's freaking awesome. So one That's ounce. Awesome. One ounce from first to second. Zell wow. Roland. He's probably throwing a shaved down pop bar. Yeah, oh yeah. He's out there. You know, pop custom, custom, custom pop bar. Uh, Something something's gonna come out of this with that. Oh, and and the Potomac River this time of the year, you can absolutely crush them, destroy fish on a pop R. Yeah, absolutely. I will guarantee you he a is Zell rolling pop R. I'll guarantee you he has been pop R in from Potomac Creek to DC. Yeah. Uh third place, 16 pounds, 14 ounces. You following these weights, Mike? Yeah, close, man. Joey Sefuentes. Joey Sefuentes. How do I know that name? He's the dude that fishes with the cowboy hat on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When he was a co-angler, he traveled yeah. with the general, Larry Nixon. Oh. And practiced with Larry. Oh. And he was a hell of a co-angler. And now wow. he's a hell of a pro. Uh, and he is in third place. Wow. With uh, 16-14. And 
in fourth place with 16.06 is our own local prodigy, Adrian Avina. Ah, Adrian. So Adrian Avina is holding his own. Wow. And then you drop down. I have to mention eighth place. Okay. Because the last time this guy fished the Potomac, he won the damn thing. And his name is Tom Monsoor. Oh. And he's in his 70s, and he only owns one lure. <laughs> he only owns one lure. Now, he owns about 2.5 million of them in every size, shape, and color, and he made them all himself. It's a swim jig. Ah. He doesn't use anything but a swim He ice fishes with a swim jig. <laughs> he's a commercial carp fisherman, buffalo fisherman on the Mississippi River. I heard he used the swim jigs for that, too. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other highlight I had... In 20th place is our guy who fishes a tournament every day of his life, John Cox. Oh, my gosh. John Cox missed practice for the Classic because he was at um, the Bass Pro Tour event. Um, left there, went to the Classic, fished a Classic, left there, drove to the Potomac to start pre-fishing for this tournament. So, John Cox... 20th place, 15.01. So he's less than two pounds off the lead. So I would not sleep well tonight, young Lawson Hibden. 27th place, another one of our local uh, favorite guys on the tour, Gray Buck. Oh, Gray. With yeah. 14 pounds, 0.12. Yeah, they're all right there, man. Oh, yeah. It's close. And then in 34th place, just because he is the general. Larry Nixon with 14.09. So uh, the top 34 places in this tournament are less than three pounds separation. Wow. And I didn't even get down the list any farther than that. Cause I can tell you it's like that the whole ways down through the yeah. list. Wow. Um, if you didn't catch a lemon on the Potomac today, uh, maybe, yeah, that, that, that maybe your motor fishing, blew up. That, that river's fishing. Good. Yeah. Potomac. So I, I have a note here to talk about the Potomac, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's, I, Last I mean, year at this time, they weren't catching anything. It was impossible. Remember the FLW was there uh, June, July, and they, they didn't catch anything. They struggled like crazy. So this, that's positive. I'd like to hear that. I like hearing that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like most places in in in, Cycles. Uh, in fishing. Well, rivers really are cyclical. Yeah, but I know. Most, yeah. most places in fishing, you know, once you're done with the spawn, you get into post-spawn, you have dynamite fishing. Yeah. And then you have dynamite fishing. And then the powder kind of starts draining out of your dynamite for a while, which is why the tours go north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the Potomac River, you know, can be a little stingy in August. But June and July, you need to be on the Potomac River because yeah. you got the grass is growing now. You know, and this was a late start this year, but the grass is growing on the Potomac now. So you got grass fishing. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Potomac's known for its hard cover mm -hmm. and pads. You like to fish pads, spatter dock. Yeah, got got about 200 miles of it there. You, you got can go fish. Um, you know, it's a great frog fishing river. You want to go have a fun day or two of frog mm. fishing mm, mm, mm. from now until the middle to the end of July on the Potomac River. The frog bite can be absolutely mm -hmm. off the chain. That's where I want to go on Sunday. Okay, we'll go down and, and interfere with the national tour level pros. Yeah, you know. That's how you are. You just can't make your mind up where to go on Sunday. Every time somebody mentions a body of water, you're like, that's where I want to go Sunday. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, we're going fishing. I'm excited. I want to go somewhere like, you know, you know, different. Okay. We can do that. You know, something that we haven't done in a while. We can do that. Like, uh, you know, like can't go to the Potomac, I guess, or the tournament there. You can't go to the flats because there's tournaments there. Now nah, you can go to the flats. We'll no, figure no, it out. it's the big uh, uh, Ram Series two-day extravaganza down there. 2,300 boats. <laughs> go, go fish Candlewood. Ooh. I heard that's getting tough right now. Ooh. Post-spawn right now. Yeah. Ah. So here's the tides for tomorrow on the Potomac River. 9.23 a.m. low tide in D.C. Now, here's the interesting thing about the Potomac for all you people who aren't may not be totally knowledgeable about it. Um, if you go from D.C. down to 
the Aquia Creek down on the Virginia side of the river, probably about a wide open throttle, uh, 45 minute run from DC, maybe, maybe longer. The tide will be two and a half hours earlier. So at 7.30 in the morning, you will have low tide in the Aquia. And this is where they talk about running the tides. So like the last two hours of outgoing and the first hour of incoming is primo prime time if you're a grass guy. Primo prime time if you're flipping wood. In other words, it's primo prime time. Um, so, you know, they're probably going to blast off at like five 30. So at, you know, six o'clock, you can be fishing the Potomac Creek or the Aquia Creek and catch the last hour and a half of outgoing. Just follow right up through. You got me? Yeah. Or if you're catching them on the beginning of incoming, we call that running the tide. And then you can fire up your boat and you can run all the ways up to like, the DC area and fish like Piscataway Creek. And it's like going back in time, two hours and you got it all over again. So that's called running the tide. And that is what makes the Potomac river so exciting because you can do that. You know, you just need, uh, some gas in your boat. Um, and you can go through some gas in your boat doing that. So, that is what they have for a tide tomorrow, and I'm willing to bet a bunch of those guys are, in fact, doing that. They are running the tide. And some of them may be so dialed in, if they're fishing hardcover, they may be so dialed into one and two fish spots that they might start in Potomac Creek and pull that trolling motor out of the water 75 times and end up in uh, the Washington Channel. You know? Yeah. And just flipping a jig, throwing a square bill, and running wood. Your grass guys, you know, they tend to stay in an area longer because, A, you have a lot more water to cover than f running, you know, to a specific stretch of docks or a specific lay down or two. Um, so your grass guys, you know, if they run the tide, it's more like, let's say they start in Aquia and they get there at six o'clock and they fish there until, you know, 9.30, nine o'clock, 9.30, and then they crank up and then they run all the ways up to, like Doe Creek or Piscataway, um, and they fish uh, a little bit of a shorter window of that, but they do it all over again. So they they capitalize on our tide. Uh, you know, that's kind of what that means. And and it, and it's and it sounds real real like difficult, but it's really not. And for the average guy like us, you know, you need to be thinking like that. You need to be thinking about the tides. Uh, I know when we used to fish in Potomac a lot, me and George, uh, we fish a lot of tournaments down there and, um, you know, some of them were big, some of them were little, but you know, in practice, that's one place I think where practice really helps you is running those tides and learning the tides. It doesn't have to be spots. It just has to be like having, you know, some of your spots that you know of up through there and just try to catch and see, see if you can catch the tide in practice. You know, you know what I'm saying, George? I know exactly what you're because, saying. Because, you know, until you do that, you really don't know how to run a tide. Until you really can say, okay, I'm down here. I get on, I, I, you know, I got my, my grass bed here. I got those docks over there. I fished at, man, all of a sudden I'm two hours into it. And then run to your next area, your next, where you think it's going to be low tide and see if you catch it. Because that's what you got to do in practice. You got to see if you can catch it and then you can, then you can say during a tournament, okay, this is when I, you know, I need to run this. I need to run it like this. Well, I need to run it like that. So yeah, just exactly. To, you know, just, and and yeah, I mean, you remember when we used to fish yeah. team tournaments yeah. down there? I mean, yeah. when we pre-fished, oh, I carried a legal pad. Yeah, in the boat. yeah. And we and, and we like, had I had a little I had a little spiral a little small spiral one that I would, 
you know, we'd write, write the time tides in at all the different places and where you needed to be at you what know, time. And then, and then you'd have to calculate it for the next day. Oh yeah. I mean, if you, if you, you know, were down there two it, days before your tournament, yeah. you're like, man, these fish were chewing. At the 10, tide was yeah. low at 10 o'clock here. Yeah. Well, your tournament's two days later. You got to add like two hours. The yeah. tide basically advances 45 minutes to an hour a day. Yeah. And then you got to take into consideration wind and all this kind of yeah. stuff. But, but if you practice that and you, and you do it every time, like, like just even if you're fun fishing, just kind of practice your running the tide and following the tide. If you're catching them on, if you know, if you, if you start catching them on that last two hours, you got that two hour window, you can just run that whole thing up through there. Yeah. And, and you can, you know, you just need to, when you're when you're fishing and practicing and you're fishing just pay attention to that well where, where the tide is and what i learned what i learned about that mike is kind of what i said earlier like for example you know dc yeah exactly to acquire which is a hell of a span, right is two and a half hours yeah so you know if you're gonna make multiple stops going back up yeah they better be quick you, yeah you can't be screwing yeah. around that's exactly what i'm saying and and and, and there's a difference between grass fishing yeah and hardcover, hardcover fishing, you can make that's pretty a hundred stops from yeah. Aquia to DC yeah. and basically stay in that window. Yeah, they got a great tide tomorrow. Oh yeah, they have a nine thirty low tide in DC. So if you're fishing up north, you might get up there too early. If you're fishing down south, you're going to hit it perfect. But here's the problem: is anybody like yeah. That's tomorrow. Now, yeah. now it gets better as the week progresses. How many days they fish that tournament? Four. Four day tournament. So it gets an hour later each day. So now if you're fishing south to north and your low tide is at 730 tomorrow, it's at 830 on yeah. Saturday. And if yeah. you make championship Sunday, yeah. it's at nine 30. Yeah. And if you were smart enough to calculate that in your practice yeah, and, and you, you found fish even farther South yeah. or even farther North, you know, there's certain rivers that that really makes it. A, a, Those a, fish might not even be able know, to be fishable right now. Yeah. There's certain rivers that that really can, can benefit you. And Potomac river is one that you, that you run the tide. That's what you do. You don't, you know, unless that's it's a spawning time of year. You run that tide. The guys that win them tournaments are running the tide. I don't care. I don't care who says what. They're running that tide, or they're catching them all on one spot at the right part of the tide. And they, you know, yeah. are, that's that's the other thing they're doing. But you, those guys running the tide, they are running the tide. But like like the Chesapeake Bay, it's not as it's, as big. It's as not as thing. an aggressive. So, however, yeah. however, I mean, what's your tide there? How however. It's a real, it, yeah, it's a, it's a much smaller tide, but however, you know, there's where I, I know I got in a situation where, um, I was fishing a big tournament and I practiced the sassafras and I, and in practice, it was like, good God, I'm going to win this tournament. Cause uh, you know, I didn't set the hook. I set the hook on one fish and it was a, it was a four pounder. And then I swam off on, 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 on each tree, like two fish. And and I'd pull them up to the surface, and they were all three and a half to four pounds. I'm like, I'm winning this tournament, I, you know, because who knows how many of them were bigger than that. And uh, I'm winning this tournament. So, but that was at like the tide for there was at 10:30. So I wanted to be there at, you know, like 10 o'clock the next day for for the tournament because you add you know an hour yeah add an hour. Plus, I wanted to calm down a little bit, you know. If you'd have got there too early, you'd have ran all your good exactly. stuff and said, "Wait a minute!" Exactly. And, and and I wanted to calm down a little bit, so I started in the uh, Northeast River on some hardcover cranking, caught a quick limit. That made your run. Thinking I'm going to lose, I'm going to call all these bad boys out. Then I made my run, get down there, and then I had to calm down because I was early. And then I kind of like just went around and did some stuff, and then I got on my groove and did my groove. Never caught a damn fish. Caught one two and a half pounder. Yeah, that happens. That's a sassafras. But idea was okay. I'm not dying here. I turn around. I I, I run back up. Now that tied up up north is, you know, starting to get right. So I spent two three hours down there, and I fire up, and I run all the way up to the back of the north deep, and I start flipping, and I salvage the day. Yeah, you ran yes. your tide. I ran the tide, and so some interesting. It does things, happen there. Some interesting things I've learned about different rivers, like. For example, 
uh, some of the eastern shore rivers, as you get closer to the bay, they'll have like a four foot tide. Yeah. And it runs so hard that the majority of it is worthless. Yeah. So you have a much more narrow window when your tide is a smoking, screeching tide. Cause some, I mean, some of it just, it's just raging. I mean, a lot of it's just not very fishable, especially incoming water. So you have a much more focused window, you know, on, on those yeah. kind of tides, uh, the Hudson river. Yeah. The Hudson river. Now you can fish a whole bunch of Hudson river and that's got a big tide on it. That's a famous river for running the tide. My God, you can run south forever. You can run damn near to West Point from, uh, you know, mm -hmm. where most of the tournaments launch. And then you can run north forever and and follow the tide. So, the, you know, you, you really get into these tidal water events and you hear these anglers talk about the tide and running the yeah. tide and they don't know about the tide and they're learning about the tide. Yeah. And some of them say, well, I'm a lake guy. I'm not a tide guy. And they, they, they go with the, they go with the other fruitful tactic of tidal water fishing, especially if you're fishing vast grass areas and that's camp and, oh, well, and yeah. fish through the yeah. good stuff. Yeah. And then do, do things like drop shot in the grass when the tide sucks, right? When the tide's not moving, when it's dead high right, or dead low, the tide sucks. Yeah. So, you know, on a dead high tide, these guys who are going to camp, they're like, Hey, if I catch anything before this tide starts ripping out, it's a bonus. Bonus fish. And it might be big. I say that all the time. Yeah. Bonus fish. So they're going to drop shot. I'll take it. I'll take you know, an eight day of the week. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I, with I, you. I, there's different ways to, well, to, to, to and do I, this. And that's what I said. You know, there's tournaments that are won in tidewater, you know, running and gunning. I think there's, and, you know, you can say what you want about running and gun guys, but I know guys on the Chesapeake Bay that have 50 spots and they just cycle the 50 spots all on the different parts of the tide and they're just cycling those spots and hoping to, you know, they got whether I think I think the really good guys that cash down there all the time, they have it timed out to be there at certain times throughout the tide because they got bit there on certain parts of the tide, better bite than than normal. I fish with a couple of them guys that are really, really good sticks down there. And they run and gun like freaking madmen on tidal water. I mean, that's just the way it is. So but like George said, you know, if fish are there, you can wait them out if you don't really have a lot of spots or if it's a new piece of water and you get on something and you know there are there is tournaments one on one spot but if it's a big there's group a, of there's fish a, there's a big ass part of the day they're not catching any fish if it's a big group of fish i, I fished a what would now be called the toyota series on on the potomac in july or august one year and the fishing was freaking horrible i think it was august uh actually bobby lane won the tournament mm. and <clears throat> bobby lane um, he won it all. He, all he did all the whole entire tournament was pitch and punch a chigger crawl. And his key to his key to that tournament was how tough the bite was. His key to that tournament was going into an area, which happened to be, um, the chicken monks and Creek, what they call the chick right below Matta woman Creek, the yep. next Creek down. He went into that creek, which was matted out. A few fish in there. Matted out as it gets in August. Yeah. And he punched. And he punched and he punched. JT Kenny was in there and he punched. And they just went round and round in circles. It's a pretty big area. Punching, 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 and every so often getting a bite. And my partner and I, who practiced together, we found fish in there on a high tide the very first morning of practice on a pop R. Um, went in there and just got all kinds of crazy bites. And, you know, after that little flurry in practice, that, that fizzled, but it told you the fish were there, but they were so hard to catch. I'll never forget Bobby Lane's key to winning that tournament was he took his ounce and a half tungsten weight and he did what he called shine it. He scratched all the paint off of it and buffed it up. So it looked chrome. And he shined his weight up, and he and he and he said that's why he won that tournament. Yeah, first day of that tournament, I did the old run the tide thing because I was it was tough. Called the chrome and blue. Yeah, and I I literally ran you know, fifty gallons of gas out of my boat 
from, you know, 30 miles south to 30 miles north and back again. And the, the rest of my tournament I spent in that creek punching. So that's the two mm-hmm. that's the two schools of thought right there. And th- that that turned out to be a what I call a camping tournament where you pull in, you set up camp. Sure. And Bobby Lane took all the bacon home. Mm-hmm. He knew when to do that. Learning experience. Yeah. So that's tight. Well, I don't know how we got off on that title war thing, man. I got oh, they're crazy. on the Potomac. Got all craziness there. They're on the Potomac. Got all craziness. Talk. I got a note here. Talk about the tides. Talk about the Potomac. All this stuff makes us better fishermen. I I agree that tide water. You know, talking the tides, man. Figuring and calculating your things. I'm telling you, I remember this little. I had a little. I had a little notepad with the you know the spring up the top. You know, you flip. You know, I have like all these notes on there and and what times and. Oh, geez. And then I never look at it during the tournament. <laughs> the other thing that you need to know when you're tide fishing and you're running why. the tide, what the hell? you need to know your marine forecast because if you get a big wind against that tide, that's going to ruin your your whole deal because it'll hold the tide out or hold well, the tide in. Well, so or it'll, bring ruin the tide. Boat, it'll ruin your boat ride on the way home too. Yeah, well, or the way there. Or the way there. Yeah. Place gets nasty down there. Did you ever ride some big ones down there, Nick? Yes, I have. Man, I was in some, I was in a tournament, a red man tournament many years ago, and I drew a guy from uh, Lake Erie. I mean, this guy had a giant boat. Back then, it was a 21 foot nitro with a huge giant motor on. I was like, man, this is the biggest boat I was ever on my entire life. And uh, it's windy, it's blowing like a son of a gun. And he had fish right on, uh, on uh, I think I call that deep point or something right out front of uh, 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 Matawoman Creek on the rocks, you know, right around the corner there. He was fishing back and forth on those rocks and and uh, he was cranking. It was a spring tournament, so these were all pre-spawn fish moving in there. And of course, the wind was blowing howling right into there, and um, it wasn't bad. But you know, we went there, we checked it, it was total mud, and he's like, "Man, I don't know what to do." I said, "Well, there's rock right straight across in Lisylvania. That's kind of when Lisylvania just got kind of going, you know, with the rock in there." So we ran over there and we fished all around that rock and it and it and it really wasn't happening. And I said, Well, I was I just finished this tournament and I caught him good in Mad Woman. I said, you know, and it plus will be out of the wind. I got him good in the pads. I got three or four spots in the pads. And I caught him good in Mad Woman in, in my tournament on Friday and Saturday. And this was a Sunday uh, Red Man tournament. And we come out of that freaking uh it was blowing like over towards it was like blowing into but uh Lieselvania. No, no, it was blowing into Madeline from Lieselvania. Oh, so you had following we, we were over there. We had, we had these seas. following seas. So guys like, all right, let's let's quick run across, you know, and, and we'll fish those pads. I'm like, that's cool. So we start running over there and he and he sees, you know, it's for following, you know. So all of a sudden I look on these waves, I'm like, son of a gun, these things are gigantic. And then, you know, we're getting on them and then we're and we're and he's doing okay. This big boat's just reaching out and grabbing that next one, you know, just a little bit. And he'd go a little bit more, and he'd great reach out and grab the next one. And all of a sudden, we got out to the chipping channel, and they're, now they're coming like this, like this, like that. And he's like, oh, no. And the boat would blow out, and we'd slide down the back of one of these waves, and then wave would crash over to the back, wave would crash over the front. And he starts panicking. This guy's like panicking. This is Lake Erie, dude. And we get hit from the side, and 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 the, and the further towards Mata when we get, the worse it got. Because it was stacking up over yeah, there. Yeah, it had longer. It had a longer reach. And you had to go all the way in there and around that 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 bomb point to get around to, to get, get out of it. To get out of it. And I'm like, we just got to get around bomb point. You need to calm down. I just said, just get on the back of one of these things and just ride it on out. And then when that one goes away, you're gonna take you're gonna take some water, but just get back up on another one and just ride that one out. Just take your time. They're gonna come from every side to you, and it's and I said, well, you're gonna be fine. This guy was freaking panicked. He's white totally white it can be intimidating we get all the way over there and we run right to my pet my first pad bed that i was I, that I had a bunch of fish out of and he and he, you know because he put it up on plane when we got around bomb point because then he was all cocky because it was all flat and everything he runs this thing like 100 mile an hour and i said right here and he shuts the boat down and i feel the boat go on the bottom like, what the hell is going on here well here all blew, the blew damn water out water was blown out of the uh uh small wood or Matta Woman Creek, and George was stuck in there all day because I broke his boat the two days for two days 
that I had it before. Remember that? It's terrible. I broke his boat, but this guy panicked. He was he was dying. A big old Lake Erie guy was crying like a baby. Yeah, well, that I mean, that's a good story, but it also brings up a good point about tidal water. You know, we're yeah. we're, we're kind of on a little tidal water tangent here. You know, if you're you, you need to know your tides, you need to know your marine forecast for yeah. the area you're going to fish. Yep. Uh, for that reason, and for the reason of how it's going to affect your tides. I mean, you can have the greatest plan in the world on running the tides, but I'm here to tell you, if it's blowing, um. Like tomorrow, if it's blowing 15 to 20 out of the south, west, or south, it ain't going to take you 25 minutes to get to Aquia. It's going to take you an hour to get to Aquia. Yeah. So, if, you know. If you even want to make that run. And then if your next stop is, because <laughs> I've done it already. It's it's bad, man. You know, it's a long way to D.C. in that situation. Plus, it's good to it's good to practice that kind of stuff. So you know, make sure your boat's well, in good I'm, order. I'm telling you, man. Make sure you know what you're doing and have the information of the tides and the weather, and you know, just keep an eye on it because you might be crying like a baby, like that guy from. Well, that's not the place to go learn if you know how to drive in rough water. <laughs> that's bad, right? You no, know, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, I've done two of these BFLs this year, and I'm watching, and I'm also learning. Yeah. And it just seems like everybody thinks they have to go 100 miles an hour yeah. all the time. And you just can't all the time. You can't. No, you can't. Well, and, up here in the Northeast, you rarely can. Well, in that, in that, in, <laughs> yeah, but in that tournament that I was fishing, that I went to the Sassafras, um, the day before, George was yelling at me because I didn't go down to practice it because it was so bad. It was like 25 mile an hour wins and it was bad i mean it was freaking horrible and um and then i kind of he said you got to make the run down there man you got to check your you got to check the sassafras because you know because it was fishing you know it was fish down there and we what we were catching some fish there so what i did was you know knowing the way the direction of the wind was coming i knew the rant to run it was a uh, south uh, west coming up this way so i ran down the western shoreline and i got down to where I was going to ride troughs across, you know, so that's what I did. I ran down the Western shoreline. I got down below kind of where I was going to go in at. And then I just rode these troughs across and it was, it was scary, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that. You know, you, you didn't, I did have a big bruise on my arm though, but that's how you plan it out. But and you, and you know that by knowing your, your wind your direction and your the tides. waters, right. You know, right. I, I, I you can't tell that. you how many times, like Nick said, uh, I mean, I vividly remember stuff from many years ago, like fishing BFLs on the south end of the bay and watching guys run the shipping channel, yeah, the buoyed shipping channel to the north end of the bay when I wouldn't have rode it in a ship. Yeah. You know, just killing them because they, they didn't do their homework. Right. They didn't understand how to run over towards the shore because yeah. they never took the time to scout it out. Yeah. And they got you, you got it. Like Mike said, he went down that western side to use it as a a, a, a windbreak, a, a buffer. And yeah. then he got his. Well, I was in one footers. He got his troughs lined up. Yeah. So he could just kind of wallow across the troughs. You, had, you have to go over a few ways. You can't ride one trough no, the whole way. No, it's you, not. But that's why you got to start down below and yeah. just kind of come up. I'll come up to it. And that holds true everywhere mm -hmm. we fish is, but, but if you don't know, yeah, you can't do that. Lake Champlain, the guys go down there and kill themselves, yeah. you know, yeah. oh, but you get the shipping channel on an outgoing tide with the, with the, with the wind blowing hard against it. It's, it's nasty. Bad. People, so that's where they break your shit up. The other nice thing you know? about going to places like the Potomac and, and all these beautiful tidal waters that we have this time of year, generally speaking, the summer's pretty stable. Yeah. I mean, we get some wind. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but it's not like the spring when that's a volatile that's, son of a gun. It's always blowing, you know, but again, yep. you know, use the wind to your favor. Also, yep. you yep. know, Mark Snyder makes a great point on here. You have to, you have to find places to fish around the weather. Right. Yes. Oh, right. If you know what's coming, that's even better yet. If you know what's coming, then you can say, well, man, I got to have to find something here in Mattawoman because I'm not going to be able I, 
I know my ability. Say, you know, you know, you should know your ability. If your ability says you can run in four footers, then you can run in four footers. But if, if you say that that scares the hell out of me, then you don't. You, then you got to find that spot in there. And that's right. You find some spots in around in around there or close by. So tomorrow very, is very day smart. two on this tournament, Mike. Mm -hmm. Now I might be wrong about this, but I don't. I, I don't think their live starts until Saturday. And if it did start today, I missed it. I was looking for it. I couldn't find anything that that shed they had live. We were um, we were and, busy, so. Well, I was looking for it this morning. Their their oh, their website and their app leaves a little bit to be desired. And plus, I'm not that good at that kind of stuff. But I don't. I think the I think the the live starts on Saturday. So. Yeah. This is a fun one to follow. Yep. We have we have two legends in the top 34. We've got two local guys in the top 27. We got a tight race. We're on the Potomac River, one of the greatest bass fisheries around. And it's on. Skeeter Lloyd, I hear you, brother. Speaking the last of, time we were up at Lake Ontario with Skeeter Lloyd, <laughs> we the, were, the, the, the seas were angry, my friend. Couldn't go, <laughs> we couldn't go anywhere, man. It was horrible. Go get him, Skeeter, and have fun, buddy. I know it's going to be better because it can't possibly be any worse. Yeah, that's true. All right, Mike. Let's spike, let's spike this thing up a little bit with some sound and, and move on to another, yeah. another, another area. I think we should go to Tackle Talk. Woo! Yeah, baby. I love talking. I love talking about tackle. Well, you sure do. We love it. Well, it's what we do every day, 24, seven, seven days a week in the shop. Love it. Webmaster Matt was here tonight and, uh, somehow he got the chain off of his ankle and got away from his desk. I got I got to grab something. Spot. We got a bigger chain though for him. So he is currently loading up a bunch of in the pipeline product for us. So we would like very much for you guys to start looking for the Picasso rusted rivet squeaky buzzbait, which is in the house, which is getting loaded up on sfttackle.com. I thought you had one out of the pack here. Uh, I did, but somehow it ended up in my boat in my possession being fished uh, for testing purposes only, of course. Was it black or white? It was black. All right, I'm going to break that. For for testing purposes only, Mike. And let me tell you, I I I I ran this I ran this bad boy on uh, last weekend, and that's like a zip tie. I ran this bad boy last weekend, and Mike's gonna bust one out of the pack here, and we're gonna get a close up of it. But it was great. I mean, like everything Picasso makes. I mean, if you guys aren't familiar with Picasso, they're a Pennsylvania company. They're out in the central part of the state. Been in this business forever. They manufacture a massive line of products. Every category, with the exception of soft plastics, line, of course, rods and reels, but in, in the bait department. Like a booger man. Um, and they looks a lot like a booger. Man. Yeah, and they they just they do it right. They've got Hank Cherry on their staff. He was he was using their shooter jig. They've got Aaron Martins on their staff, um, you know, the Furious Hog Snatcher, and they have a whole line of Furious Hog Snatcher products, you know, his own twist on the uh, shaky head, which is called the rhino head, his own twist on the, uh, what's that little jig head with the plastic blade on it? Scrounger head, his his own twist on the scrounger head that they make, and, 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 uh, Spinner baits and buzz baits, and this buzz bait right here oh, is has got a. See if you can get a close up on that rivet, Mike. You can hear it squealing. Oh, it sounds great on the water. His buzz bait has got a rusted right there, rivet. Right there it is. It's okay, it. to 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 hasten and and accentuate that squeaky sound we like. You can also tune this yeah, blade right to hit the head, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was, I was gonna just saying. It kind of has a booger man kind of look to it. Oh yeah, 
you know, really has that booger man-ish. The other thing that Picasso does that I really like. Got Mike, a really good hook in it. Thank you. Oh, is that what you're going to say? Thank you. Really good. Hook. Thank you. And, you know, they always use a round bend hook. Um, show that round bend on that hook, Mike. So, I mean, a round bend hook gives you more gap. Okay. As opposed to a sprout hook, which is kind of a little like pinched together a little bit. So you got a great hook, sharp, awesome hook. And I ran it it's on got a Sunday. good trailer keeper too, George. It does. It does. Nice trailer. Now keeper. I ran mine uh, trailer less. Now, what we're doing a lot of times on our buzz baits, and the reason that keeper is going to be a winner is a lot of times I like to take the skirt off, and most most people do. I'll take the skirt off and I'll put a toad style bait on there. And that keeper is going to really help with that holding that toad in place. Ooh, look at that. That's, a, that's squealing right out of the box. Yeah. Rusted rivet. Well, I used to have a, bu a buzz bait like, just like this. It sounded just like that. I can't wait to throw this. That Yeah, but yours, it took 500 years to get yours to do that. It really did. This one was right out of the get go. So, Mike, uh, the keeper to hold the toad on. And, you know, one of the benefits of putting that toad on that buzz bait, I don't know if you know this or not, Nick, or if you do this. You can skip a buzz bait with a toad. Easy. It's easy to skip. So you can skip boat docks. You can skip up underneath cut banks with your toad on there. Much better than you can with a skirt. So, And with that keeper, that toad's going to stay in place. So the rusty squeaker uh, shall be loaded up here very shortly on SFTTackle.com. And uh, that's in the pipeline. There's a few hooks that are being loaded, which we will talk about on next week's show because we have to really show you these hooks and explain them to you. They're all super tech hooks. So look for about a half a dozen new Gamagatsu hooks to get loaded. Look for some new VMC hooks to get loaded. Yeah. And we'll break them down next week, Mike. I yeah. want to do a little hook thing next week. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to make a note in the book, people. We're going to talk hooks. Hooks. I love talking about hooks. We're going to talk hooks next week. Uh, so yeah. Mike Sellers, how you the, doing, The rusty buddy? squeaker, Mike. Yeah, I love that thing, man. Uh, you going to throw Collins. that on Sunday when we go fishing? Absolutely. Should we have a buzz bait only tournament? No. The only lure we can no, use I don't is want a buzz any, bait? I don't want any restric restrictions. I want, to, I want to go wide open. Okay. I just want to be out there just wide open. Okay. Mike Sellers is in the house. James Hawk, how are you doing? Richie Hall. Wait a minute. Aaron Martins, yeah. Aaron Martins, speaking of Aaron Martins. He had a seizure? Yeah, uh, he had a, they think, a grandma stroke. A stroke? A st grandma seizure, a grandma stroke, something like that. I know he had a seizure. Yeah, and he ended up in the hospital. So, you know, prayers to him. You know, you know he's fighting a, fighting a mean battle, and he's 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 got a real positive attitude, and he's going through it. So we're right there behind him. Prayers I, to I would you. Say, I would say the, the, the Tackle Shop Live community. If we could all get together on that and put some put some positive prayer waves together, we might be able to help yeah. the situation a little bit. Absolutely, but he's still he's he's got he's like I'm going to be at the Champlain event. He wants he was going to make it. He, he, the last time he, he fished an elite Potomac, series, I think. the last time he fished an elite series at Champlain, uh, he uh, he won, or he finished second, or he did both. Yeah. Andre, yeah. So I think a yeah, seizure. Okay, yeah. He yeah. was scheduled to be at this next tour, Andrea, but he he won't be able to. Andrea says it's, this, yeah, this next one, but he could for the uh, Champlain. He was scheduled for what? This Potomac one. I'm not sure which one it was. He, yeah, he was scheduled to come up north here. Yeah, and then because of the seizure, obviously. Yeah, but there was I think there was two there was two of them that they were doing. And I, and I think the first one, obviously, he can't make, but I wouldn't put it past him to go to the Champlain. I mean. The guy's tough as a nail. He fished a tournament where, like, just came out of the hospital with a hole in his head or something, didn't he? Yeah, he's a tough guy. He's a tough dude, man. He's an awesome dude. Me and George got a chance to meet him and talk to him at uh, a couple of the um, – ICAST events, you know, and you get, to, oh, yeah. you, get to, you get a chance to hang out with all these guys, you know, under different, not work settings, you know, kind of like on just, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, 
I don't know. Chillaxing. What, what, yeah, yeah, relaxing kind of setting, you know, where you can really read who they really are. And he's just a really smart guy, fun guy. Super cool dude. Super cool. Yep. You know, just a really good guy. And it was just fun. It to, was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg, so, Greg Hall uh, asked a question, Mike, uh, that's kind of in this tackle window. Yeah. About the new mm -hmm. Corrado finesse reel. Yeah. So people out there, including Greg Hall, are starting to figure out that Corrado is coming out with a new finesse reel. And what it is, it's called the Corrado BFS, which which stands for Bait Finesse System, um, which is a whole, you know, yeah, little bait, light bait, but on gear that can handle big fish. So it's you know it's it's seven to seven two three rods that have some backbone but yet have a, a, a tip designed to cast a small bait. And it's, it's a big, it's a big thing coming out of Japan. It's a bait finesse system. So now, you know, and they have a BFS in their Zodius line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which obviously they'll have more. You can't just yeah. have one rod, Yeah, but they're, 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 uh, which is a cool taper, really awesome taper in that rod. Yeah, it's not a wimpy tip. It's not, but it'll cast a small bait. Yeah, but now they have a reel that they're that they're getting ready to release to market, and they've been they've been trying to get it out. As as you all know, there's ma massive delays in in shipping, but it's called the BFS reel, the Corrado BFS. We have a uh, we have a large amount of them uh, scheduled to arrive here as soon as they get the damn things into the country <laughs> um whenever so that, whenever that may be you know japan's closed right now so we can't go over and get them or else i'd send mike over tomorrow but I'd right go. now I'd it's go. closed so i know a couple greg sushi we will have them at. and of course you know we'll blow it up here on tackle shop live matt's already got the web page built for him he's just ready to throw the switch and go go live with it and uh yeah, yeah. we're uh we're hoping it shows up quick Okay, uh, we have the iCast show coming up in about a month, not even a month, like yeah, three weeks. Yeah, that's a bummer. I'm not going to be able to go. George is going to go. Well, you know, one way or the other, we're going to have some Corrado. Somebody BFSs. has to go there. So George is going to go to the iCast show, do the, do the best he can with covering it. Yeah, well, we'll have tons of iCast coverage coming up, but that's three weeks off. Um and of course, we'll go. We'll go heavy duty on that. But Don Roder's checking I, in. How I you would doing, be Don? surprised, Greg, if those reels aren't on the shelf by then, because they like to. They love to do releases on opening day of iCast. The, the the latest trend is for the companies that can. And this year's a lot of challenges to have a hot product. Yeah. On the retailer shelf and let them go live on their web pages, and they'll have it to the minute. They'll be like, you know. 9 a.m. East Eastern Standard Time, you can go live with this product on day one of ICAST. So I'm sure by then we'll have them, if not before. So that's, what, three weeks? Yes. To a yeah. long-winded answer to get your answer. I'm yeah. sorry about that. Yep. Um. Yeah, so some other product, Mike. Uh, we, we received another really big Z-Man shipment. Been hanging that up for two days. Okay. We also uh, got a ton of the Z-Man um, bait lockers back in. The bait lockers are here. They were out of stock for like ever. Everybody was looking for them. So the bait lockers are back in. I saw some going out uh, on shipping today. Everybody who had them on back order, they, they shipped don't. today. Um, also, I got the new product list from Z-Man. Oh, God. You better make some room in your boats or buy a bigger boat because they got a lot coming out. Really good looking stuff. Uh, we got a big line. line. We got big line shipments in today. We got big Seaguar, big Sun Line, and big High Seas. They all hit the dock today. They're unpacked. They are hung up. Uh, Seaguar will go live in the, on the website. The quantities will update here tonight yet because this all just went down because, you know, line's been a problem. We got a uh, pretty good Shimano shipment in today. We got some Zodius rods in. Huh. Haven't seen them in a bit. So we got we got one spinning rod, and as soon as I cut it out of the box, the guy's like, what's that? I said, seven-foot medium-light spinning rod. Oh, I'll take that. 
Uh, we got some jackal gargles back in. Who the hell sends one rod? Oh, well, it's going. I don't get it. We got some jackal gargles back in. We got a Kai Tech shipment. So all you Kai Tech guys, I got some bad news for you. Japan is locked down and Kai Tech is running out of everything. And they aren't expecting a resupply until sometime in August. Mm. So mm, mm, mm. I got the heads up from Big Mike over at Kai Tech. Sent a, sent a little message my way and... Uh, Monday, I ordered from them, and today there was a nice little package in the warehouse. So we'll be getting that out. We got uh, some G Loomis IMX rods coming back into stock. There's some chatterbait rods. There's some uh, CBR 843 crankbait rods that have, been, that, that have been on back order forever. So some of that stuff showed up. We got some Sims in. Uh, pretty light on the Challenger rain suits, but we got some. We do have a pretty good amount of the CX rain suits in. And you can buy winter sweatshirts. We got those in. Yeah, we got the new we got the new sweat. Yeah, the sweatshirts came in. Yeah. That's, At least it didn't come in last week when it was 98 well, degrees. I think last week we got knit beanies. Yeah, we got knit beanies in. When we it got was beanies in from somebody last week. <laughs> crazy. I know. That's crazy. Crazy times. What else you got, Mike? What? Well, we I think we should show them the 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 latest uh um, oh man you know and i and then call it quits did you put the oil on the hinges on the front door no, yet no because they, they uh them hinges aren't gonna you know not gonna hold up to this the, out onslaught the Come latest on in, nick the latest release of the vision 110 just came out and hit the shelves today how do you pronounce that one tanagon 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 Tanagon. Let me see that. You you, you butcher it. GP every word. Tanagon. Yeah. GP is the, the type of finish. That's a C more through C through ish. And Tanagon. What's the SP dash C mean? Special color. Uh yeah. Okay. Pretty tricky. Special color at GP Tanagon. So basically what they do, as you well know, we've gone over this numerous times. They they make special runs. They do them in a couple baits. They do them in limited quantities. They limit how many the dealer can get. You can have one. And GP Tanagon is sexy, and it knows it. Don Roder, here you go. We got it in the 110. We got it in the Pop Max. Popper. do 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 the Pop Max. Pop Max is bad to the bone, too. The Pop Max walks as good as any spook out there. <laughs> and we got it in the 110 Junior. 110 Junior. 110 there Junior. You go. So those three baits are... We're not even putting them on a website because they don't last long enough for that. The Mega Bass I'm Mafia salivating. comes in. Right now I am and salivating. And just attacks. But we got a little bit. We got enough to make it interesting. Keep so they're talking. in the house. Keep talking. I'm salivating. You can cancer. call if you if you can't get into the shop. You can call us and you can get them over the phone and we'll we'll ship them out to you, of course. But uh, we just don't. By the time we get these this this thing loaded on the web page, it'll all be sold anyways. So we don't mess with it. It's just a little fun. Every couple fun every thing. you know once a month or once every two months well, they what, come out with something cool. What's cool about it is back in the day they used to um. Mega Bass, the only way you could get it was they would fax you. Does anybody know what a fax is anymore? They would fax you a list on Monday, and you would have to fill it out real quick and fax it back to them on Monday to get the shipment that came in. Remember how they used to do that? Well, you get a shot at it. And it would sell out right away, and then it would be like guys would be calling you because there was no internet or anything back then. Nobody, nobody knew who had what. But you, you know, over the years, people fun. know who you were, and then it was fun. It was just a fun time. To, it was a fun bait to to sell. It was a fun bait when you got them. People would just, you know, tear the, the doors down when they when you got your shipment in. Well, I mean, you know why their stuff is like that because it catches fish. Well, that's why I said at the beginning of the show when we were talking about, you know, uh, plus guys like me and you who are release. complete freaking bait junkies. I mean, I mean, we got to have this. We can't exist on this earth without this bait in our box. We, I won't stand for it. Can't. So, 
we got enough for all of our good friends out there and uh yeah you can stop in the shop and grab them uh or you can give us a call and uh yeah well so that's a that's our last little that's our last little bait deal on on that next uh, week we'll be back on thursday uh evening next week corbin will probably be back i don't know what he's doing i asked george what he's doing george didn't even know he just didn't show up for work Corbin had a uh, project he was working on. He was putting his dock in at his cabin. It's more important than Tackle Shop Live, bro. That's what I tried to say. I mean, come on. Then I got a 20-minute tutorial on why. Uh, whatever. So we miss Corbin tonight. Any other day, Corbin. If anybody sees Corbin, tell him what you think of that. I got a note in the book for next week to go over some hooks. We're going to do some hook talk. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about hooks. We're All right, be talking about some I, new hooks, some old hooks, and, and some I, some hook and I terminology. Wanna do, I want to do a question and answer episode too. One of these one of these times, we we like to do that every every so often. So maybe it's fun. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll do a a question and answer. If you guys want to start saving up your questions for either me, George, and I'm sure Corbin and Nick Nick will be here. Um, we want some special questions. We, you know, we'll, we'll answer. We questions. want your A material. Well, we want to talk about what you guys want to talk about too. Yeah. You know, if you have something you want to talk about, we'd like to do that also instead of just me and George talking about what we like to talk about, which is everything fishing. But of course you guys might have specific things that we haven't touched on because we just don't, we can't think of everything. So, you know, think about some questions for next next time or, you know, the next couple uh, shows. We'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll throw some question and answer in there and, um, you know, save them up. And 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 now it's, it's a fun time. That's a, there again. It, that's one of them things where the conversation just goes everywhere. And I, lo I love those types of shows. Andre. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hooks. On the punch hooks. Where do you see the oh, punch? Yeah. Hook? Where do you see the punch hook we talk about next week, Andre? Yeah. We're going to talk about several of them, but where do you see the the new Cadillac of punch hooks? Rotor, I got you covered. Mike Barr, thanks for stopping by. Nick, you got any last final thoughts for us? Nope. Great show, guys. No, uh, no awe-inspiring fishing uh, motivation, nothing like that? Well, you got to get out there to catch them. <laughs> there you go. A master of the obvious. I mean, to tell you. Captain that. Obvious. Captain Obvious nailed it. Captain Obvious got you can't us. Can't catch him while you're sitting on the couch. And with that note, we will catch you next time on Tackle, Tackle Shop, Shop Live. Live. sunny day a oh, right there you took my breath away a oh, young and pretty was it just a dream the next day you called me up you told me i'm your little buttercup you came over and you fell into my arms well i know what i feel please tell me your love is real you make this my way to think of you if i